Former first round pick Greg Robinson was arrested twice, two years apart for essentially the same crime, transporting large quantities of drugs with intent to distribute. And based on the public puzzle pieces available, this was a plot twist that was even more shocking than Sam heard. We'll discuss exactly why a little later in the video. So here's a fact that you probably already know. In the first round of the 2014 NFL Draft, the Rams selected arguably the best player in the entire NFL. But what's oftentimes not talked about is the fact that Aaron Donald, despite being the 13th overall pick, wasn't even a Rams first selection in that draft. Now, for some reason, I'm choosing to follow that ominous statement with a picture of RG3. It'll all make sense in a second. Two years prior to the Aaron Donald draft, the Rams once again held the number two overall pick, a pick that they traded away to Washington, who was moving up to get Baylor Phenomenon and Heisman Trophy winner, Robert Griffin III. Now, in order to move up to get their future Rookie of the Year winner, Washington traded three first round picks and a second round pick to the Rams in order to move up a few spots. A huge trade that may have bared a couple pieces of fruit, but ultimately wouldn't work out great for either team, really. Anyway, one of those picks like pulled itself up by his bootstraps, with Washington being unable to have sustained success, that draft pick grew right back into a number two selection only a couple years later. And with that pick, the Rams selected offensive tackle out of Auburn, Greg Robinson, the top tackle prospect in that draft. Then 11 picks later with their own first round pick, they took the best defensive tackle prospect in the draft and boom, they were set at both positions for the next 10 years. Or at least that's what they thought. Today, Aaron Donald's coming off seven first team all pro nods, his three defensive player of the year awards and one Super Bowl trophy to go with it. Greg Robinson, well, he's actually put up some numbers of his own. Eight felony drug charges, two separate arrests, and hopefully for his sake, one good lawyer. Without further ado, y'all know what time it is, bros. True to win. Yeah, I'm not no quitter, cause I'ma go, I'ma go, I'ma go get her. Today's video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global leader in men's grooming tools and hygiene solutions. Now, if you're not up to date with modern men's grooming, which includes the importance of body hair maintenance, you're kind of missing the boat. But luckily, Manscaped offers everything you need for head to toe grooming as a part of their performance package bundle. Now, my favorite products include the Lawnmower 4.0 waterproof body hair trimmer. Well, that plus the crop preserver ball deodorant. These help me keep a fresh trim up, especially in those tough areas below the waist, and keep that area cool, hydrated, and smelling great all day. We all know that man maintenance is key, but don't stop at the one. What your coach used to tell you, run through the line. Now also, Manscaped just released a new collection of anti-chafing, high-performance boxer briefs with both function and fashion in mind. And with the release of this new boxer brief collection, there's now more than six color combinations to choose from. You can go with the conservative all-black pack or go bold with the new black and gold waistbands. It is really up to you. Now you also had an option to select a single unit or bundle up and save with the three pack options that are offered at manscaped.com. And the real secret of these is the new jewel pouch design anti-chafing smooth flat lock seams the boxes are comfortable and supportive like i say these are pretty dope now check it out go to manscape.com today and get 20 percent off plus free international shipping when you use promo code flimlo20 at checkout that's 20 percent off plus free shipping when you use the code flimlo20 at manscape.com shout out to manscape once again for sponsoring the video without further ado let's get it so Greg Robinson is a Louisiana kid who grew up with both his parents and two brothers. When Hurricane Katrina hit back in 2005, Greg and his family were displaced and had to move to Houston. A couple years later though, they returned home and Greg attended Thibodeau High School. When his junior season rolled around, Greg was moved to the offensive side of the ball, a move that would put him in prime position to change his family's lives. Unfortunately, the family's lives were already changing rapidly. The tough environment created a sense of urgency that made Greg's brothers believe they couldn't afford to just wait around hoping that Greg would one day come into money. They needed it now. Now Greg's dad was a welder who supported the family through his craft. But even years and years on that job hadn't yielded the type of results that Greg's two brothers were looking for. They went, let's just say for now, down a different path while Greg chose 
the football route. He's gonna play sports. Now fast forward a few years and man, Greg's dad has suffered an injury on the job and was now living off his pension, social security, and disability checks. Greg's two brothers who'd chosen the street life, well, they'd gotten caught up in that and were now serving time in prison. At this point, it was 100% on Greg to cash in on his talents. His athletic career or lack thereof, at that point it seemed like the only thing that could save the family from financial ruin was Greg making it to the league. He had to make it. In 2012, after red shirt in the previous year, Greg became the starting left tackle for Auburn. Dude was making progress towards that life-changing payday. He just needed a little more time. But as we know, fate can sometimes be cruel and going into Greg's red shirt sophomore year, the one thing he needed, talking about time, that was the one thing that he would not get. Well, Flynn, what do you mean by that? In 2013, Greg's dad sadly passed away. At least one of his brothers was still in jail and his mom was trying to find work as a nursing assistant, which was proven problematic. So on top of grieving after losing, you know, a figurehead in the family, the Robinson's financial issues were starting to come to a boiling point. Greg played with a new type of fire that year. This was his third year in the system at Auburn. His body was maturing and now, dude had the motivation of taking care of the family, basically putting rocket boosters on his back. He ended up playing so well that season that he was named first team all SEC as a sophomore, helping to carry his team to an SEC championship win and a BCS national championship appearance. A game that Greg's mom sadly couldn't even attend. She couldn't afford to make the trip. NIL that some people hate so much would've came in pretty handy right there. Auburn ultimately came up three points short, losing to Jameis Winston and the Florida State Seminoles. But Greg didn't have the luxury to run it back. Another year of mom not being able to get to the Super Bowl of college football to watch her son play, no thank you, I'm good. With his family in need of money and his draft stock through the roof, Greg made the smart decision and entered the 2014 draft. The Rams utilized that RG3 pick we talked about earlier to select Greg Second overall, he signs a fully guaranteed four-year, $21 million contract, receives a nearly $14 million signing bonus, and boom, he lives happily ever after. Okay, not exactly. Greg struggled to live up to his draft positioning in the NFL. As a rookie, his PFF grade placed him at the 200 best lineman in the league. And that was actually the best overall grade he's ever produced as a member of the Rams. In 2016, he showed up to camp 15 pounds overweight and was a healthy scratch by week 11 of that season. After the Rams acquired Andrew Whitworth in 2017, they decided not to pick up Greg's fifth year option. Never a good sign for a first round pick. But before they let him walk in free agency, the Rams decided to deal Greg to the Lions for a six round pick. Crazy to think as a former second overall pick just a few years earlier, how much his value dissipated, just completely tanked throughout a few years in the NFL. Then, only to make matters worse, the Lions decided to release him only a few months later. In 2018, he was picked up by the Cleveland Browns. Now, his two years there were easily the best of his career. He actually became a pretty consistent pass blocker there, something that had been a weak point for Greg ever since college. At that point in his career, it seemed like his career was starting to level out, and had he just been able to stay at that level, you know, it would have ended up being a pretty solid career overall. But an incident in week one of 29 19 where he kicked Kenny Vaccaro in the head wasn't a good look but you know he's an old lineman nastiness is literally a positive attribute when you're talking about these cats so it's not, not a huge deal now like I said earlier Greg got 21 million when he got drafted by the Rams he also got another 9 million re-signing with the Browns in 2019 he was also arguably coming off the best season of his entire career barring that little week one situation played extremely well and was likely in line for another deal might have been another short-term deal but we talking another multi-million dollar contract so for him to make the move that he ends up making next nearly impossible to see it coming a few months following the 2019 season, while Greg's agent was likely negotiating his next NFL contract, Greg looked to an old friend for a quick non-football check. That old friend was Quan Bray, an old college teammate from Greg's Auburn days. Now, unlike Greg, Bray didn't come into the NFL and become an instant multimillionaire. Bray was actually an undrafted free agent who spent most of his time on the practice squad and injured reserve. This is unfortunate, but it's typically a recipe 
for a short career. But Bray had actually managed to stay afloat from 2015 to 2018. But by 2019, he'd moved on to the AAF, a short-lived spring football league that launched and went out of business all in that same year. Now, Quan Bray actually had an even tougher upbringing than Greg. And I think this one quick story is the best way to convey that. The same year Quan committed to Auburn, his dad was sentenced to life in prison for murdering his mom. Nine years later, and here he was with Greg riding in a rented 2020 Chevy Tahoe somewhere south of El Paso, Texas. So Greg Kwan and a random unnamed driver were making a trip from Los Angeles back to Louisiana. So in the car, you got a 330 pound man, a 184 pound man. Another person will assume is around 170. Oh, and about 157 pounds of marijuana. Pretty easy scent for the dogs at Border Patrol to pick up. Now the guy that came along just to be the driver had tired out by this point so Quan had taken the wheel. Quan attempts to go through border patrol with no issues and despite the fact that the two men who know about the marijuana in the car Quan and Greg are extremely nervous they of course try to play it cool and just get through but the dogs that we just talked about a second ago they do their jobs and pick up the 157 pound scent we're talking about the weight of a small person three men end up getting arrested on the spot greg and Quan are charged with drug conspiracy and possession of marijuana with intent to distribute it would later come out that greg had attempted to convince the unnamed passenger who ended up not being charged at all by the way but greg tried to convince him to take the fall for the marijuana saying that basically you know he'd pay him to do so but dude not only only declined he ended up working with the police as he was a legal documented immigrant who obviously did not want that type of trouble the man not trying to get deported apparently the guy had been hired to run errands for greg a couple years earlier and he often drove him or his family members around the city in louisiana according to the story the guy was given a ticket to fly to la and then drive greg and Quan back to the booth but according to the driver he was never filled in on the fact that he was actually actually transporting drugs in the car that he was driving and i'm not gonna lie man assuming that's true that's actually pretty messed up because not only did they bring dude on as a driver but they never filled him in with what he was transporting and it seems like they not only brought him on to you know take the bulk of that long ridiculous drive that's an extremely long drive how long is that drive Okay, so we're talking about a 29 hour drive. So not only did they bring him along for that, but they also seem like they brought him on for insurance in case they got caught to kind of say, hey man, won't you just take this charge? But, but he wasn't going for it. Dude's story must've checked out or the police was just happy that he was working with them and cut him a deal. Either way, he wasn't charged. Now, out of Greg and Quan, Greg obviously had the most to lose. Again, this was February of 2020 only a few months after Greg's best NFL season, and he was now facing up to 20 years in prison if convicted. Till this day, it's unclear exactly why Greg decided to put himself in that position to begin with. And like I was saying earlier, just going through this whole story, I find it to be a hell of a lot more shocking than the Sam Hurd situation, and here's why. When Greg came into the league, bam, he got $20 million right out the gate. And then even after that, he got another $9 million contract with the Browns for one season. Now, when it comes to NFL standards, these ain't crazy numbers by any stretch of the imagination. But you would think that it would still be enough to keep you from transporting pounds and pounds of drugs across five states. So it's more surprising or more shocking to me because Sam Hurd was an undrafted free agent. Sam Hurd had to grind on the low end of the NFL for pretty much his entire career. He didn't get his first like real contract until after he had started selling, and that was with Chicago. Now Sam's attempt at becoming a drug kingpin is still nuts. It's still an absolutely insane thing to do in his situation. But at the very least, you could look at that situation and say, okay, at least he stood to make more money in the the way he was going as opposed to what he was making in the NFL. For Greg, 
that's not really the case. I mean, again, he played in the league from 2014 to 2019, made $30 million. And I keep pointing this out because it's important. That's not all just from the first contract. He signed a second one year deal but it's for nine million bucks that's solid then on top of that like i also said earlier he was arguably coming off his best season as a pro and was likely gonna get another at least solid contract so even if he had somehow blown through everything he he looked to have more money coming in you know what i'm saying so he can kind of start over kind of reinvest and, and, and fix his finances but it, it just didn't play out that way greg had made a nice number of millions in the league but here he was had he managed his money poorly and placed himself in debt always a possibility we've seen it too many times sometimes guys live these ridiculous lifestyles that can't be sustained or sometimes it's more along the lines of like the trent richardson situation where it's just your family and your circle that's kind of draining you dry and so that could have been the case with Greg you know bad investments that car wash that your cousin wanted to start that restaurant your boy wanted to do we've seen over and over and over that stuff just drain dudes pockets because a lot of those people that you're loaning that money out to to start those businesses don't have a clue what it takes to actually sustain those businesses they think I just need the money and then I'm good. You do need the money to start it, but it take a hell of a lot more than just that. Either way, to go from $20 million guaranteed to transporting 157 pounds of marijuana from LA to Louisiana in five years, pretty damn crazy. But believe it or not, the story actually gets a little bit wilder. So Greg pays $25,000 bond, gets out, he doesn't end up serving any real time, instead just gets five years of probation now probation ain't no damn walking apart but just judging off of what he was caught doing this is about as easy as you can even hope to get off all he had to do was not commit another crime not possess any illegal drugs and submit to periodic drug testing he also did get one year of house arrest quan bray actually shook all the way back and got back into pro ball literally right now dude's playing in the cfl and seems to be doing pretty well but for greg the fall from grace was just too much for him to bounce back from. So whatever created the quote unquote need for Greg to make that trip in the first place, yeah, that issue was never solved. Greg had actually ended up losing money throughout that entire situation. And now that you're dealing with probation and not to mention one year of house arrest, no NFL team was trying to deal with that and maneuver that. So he's out of a job. So for reasons that we don't know, his finances at this point they were somewhat compromised. On top of that, his primary source of income, gone. So what's next? Well, at this point in Greg's life, he needed to lean on his past experiences and find useful skills that he could apply to this moment in his life. And he kinda did that, but if you're pulling for Greg in this story, not in a way you might hope. Greg used his old film study tactics to access his previous arrest. Where had he gone wrong? Where could he improve? To Greg, this was basically year two in the drug league. He'd gained experience and felt that he would perform better the second go round. Yeah, y'all see where I'm going with this. So when the apparent drug season rolled around, which I guess is February, Greg suited up once again in a brand new truck, this time an Escalade. The ball kicks off, Greg takes the field and makes the exact same mistake he made as a rookie. In plain English, in February of this year, 2022, Greg Robinson was pulled over and arrested once again, this time with a truck full of drugs. But how do you top 157 pounds of marijuana? Well, simple, you diversify. This time, it wasn't just marijuana. According to the online articles, Greg was caught with quantities of cocaine, crack cocaine, crystal meth, oxycodone, hydrocodone, Xanax, and of course, marijuana. It all totaled out to be about $120,000 worth of drugs. Greg once again faces charges of possession with intent to distribute, but this time it includes actual hardcore drugs that generally carry much stiffer penalties. Not to mention this is now his second drug offense, not to mention he was already on probation. What are you doing, bro? Like a lot of the videos I do here on this channel, I really hope I can revisit this in a year or two, maybe with some new insights and new information. This would hopefully provide more context and allow us to better understand just the decision making process. Like really, like how, how does he get to this point? Was he being pressured? Was he like doing a favor for a loved one? Now we do know that 
years and years and years ago, his two brothers had gone to jail for selling drugs. Was he attempting to carry out a favor for one of them? Or had he really blown through everything and was that desperate to get immediate cash? It's funny because I'm actually not big on interviewing players. I actually like doing the research the way I do it, just using internet articles and, and kind of piecing the puzzle together. I enjoy the process. But this is one of those situations where, you know, maybe sometime in the future, I could sit down and ask dude some questions because I'm legitimately curious. How did he get to the point where he was desperate enough to do this, not once, but twice? The last piece of information I could find on this was published a few months back in March. There it said Greg remained in jail with a $315,000 bail after being arrested in February, which was a full month earlier. So we do know that at least for that first month, he hadn't put the bail money up yet. And the saddest part about this particular story is that he held up his end of the bargain and put the family in a position where it should have been financially set for the foreseeable future. This has always been one of my major issues with formal education. And maybe this has changed, but when I was coming up, there were no money management classes, no classes teaching us how to budget our bread. And lots of kids didn't come from families who would have that knowledge as they were struggling mightily with those things themselves. So you just never learn it. Sadly, in the end, despite seeing millions of dollars in the NFL, Greg is taken down by the same traps his brothers had fallen into over a decade earlier and now despite the fact that he was able to achieve at least his initial nfl dream the family seems to be finding itself right back in the same financial position where they started that's tough man